there. Welcome to the European Parliament in Brussels for our latest episode of Talking Europe on France 24. Today, we are looking ahead to the next big election in Europe. Italians going to the polls on March 4th after a campaign that has been punctuated by violence, some extremist rhetoric, Euroscepticism and a definite uncertainty about which way the result is likely to go. Well, we will try and get through some of the main issues with today's guests from the party of the current Prime Minister, Paolo Gentiloni, the Democratic Party. We're joined by Roberto Gualtieri. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, here in Europe with the uh, Socialists and Democrats group. And from the party that's not yet even 10 years old, but which has been leading in the polls up to now, Ignazio Corral from the Five Star Movement. Hello there. Thank you for inviting. Thanks for being with us. Now, uh, your group known as anti-establishment and a member of the uh, Eurosceptic Europe of Freedom and Democracy group here in the European Parliament. I think we'll come back to that Eurosceptic or not question a bit later on. Okay. But firstly, uh, something important before we get stuck in. Uh, within the last two weeks before an election in Italy, uh, nobody's allowed to publish any opinion polls. So we're not going to be giving any uh, to you. But on the last numbers, no one party was on the 40% level uh, that's needed for a majority. And many voters did say that they're still somewhat undecided. On that point, then, let's get a better idea about why the public are having such trouble plumping for a party. This report from Clément Bonnereau. This is Le Ville di Scampia, a housing estate in Naples' Scampia neighbourhood. With its crumbling balconies, uncollected rubbish and drug dealers, it concentrates many of the problems that affect Italy's underdeveloped south. Here, youth unemployment hovers around 50 percent, more than double the rate in northern Italy, fueling a growing sense of apathy among voters. Honestly, I don't trust anyone anymore. I say that from my heart because after so many years and after so many promises, no one has done anything for us, no matter what party. Anti-establishment parties are hoping to convert people's anger into votes. Poised to reap the benefits of this populist wave is the so-called Five Star Movement. With its Eurosceptic anti-immigration and pro-green platform, it's been increasingly popular in the South, especially among young voters. The latest polls point to a fragmented parliament after the general election on March the 4th, with the Five Star Movement, Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia and Paolo Gentiloni's centre-left coalition each securing about a third of the seats. The outcome of the vote, though, is highly unpredictable. As many as a third of voters say they're still undecided. Well, let's come straight then to uh, the big underlying theme of perhaps all elections and the big theme of that report you just saw, the economy. Uh, Italy's economy is still seen overall as somewhat weak, unemployment at 11%, uh, which is above the EU average. And there is huge public debt, 2.3 trillion euros. Uh, perhaps come to you first, Mr Gualtieri. Do you think perhaps voters might be punishing the Democratic Party, which has, of course, been in power since 2013? I see yeah, the, the, the issue is that uh, we took a country in 2013 that was uh, close to collapse. We had a very deep financial crisis. We put Italy back to growth, negotiating flexibility instead of austerity with the European Commission uh, and, uh, and making a number of reforms. Now we are seeing the result of this reform. We had one million more jobs we have now country is growing more than uh, uh, expectations but still we have very deep scars i would say of the crisis social inequalities uh, uh, the fact that uh, in any case salaries and uh, wages do not grow sufficiently we have low inflation across all the europe uh, so the benefit also of the growth now are not equally distributed so that's the reason why there is discontent but that's also why we think we need to keep on track on a recovery and a socially balanced policy in order to have sustainability of public finance, but more investment, more social cohesion, not dismantling our welfare state, but modernizing it. <laughs> OK, well, at the moment, a lot of people are saying that they're going to be voting for your party, Mr Corral. Uh, in terms of the economy, of course, the Five Star Movement is untested, isn't it? Why would anyone trust the Five Star Movement with something as big as the entire economy? 
Well, it's untested because we never governed. So we are asking to have our first chance to show that we can do something different that the central right first and the central left after have done during these years. We've been proposing, of course, in 2013, when we first entered into the, Europe, the Italian parliament, we were seen as a protest movement. But five years of working inside the institutions uh, make us now a movement of, uh, with a program, with a uh, very deep program that concerns all the different aspects of our nations. And we believe we have solutions for our country, solutions that can be, that can be done. And we are asking people to give us this uh, chance of changing our country. Speaking about polls, mm -hmm. in 2013, when we closed the polls, we were given at about 15% and we managed to have about 25% in the results. So now they close the polls and we are close to 30%. So we really hope to do something similar that happened five years ago and uh, try and get close to that majority that we need to govern. We uh, are sure that we can change the future of our country. OK, well, we are obviously still in the dark as in terms of polls. We'll find out more on March 4th when Italian voters have their say. I want to come to another subject that's been uh, really big in this election campaign. It shocked a lot of people inside and outside of Italy, uh, talking about uh, racism, a tip of, uh, sort of symbolised by the attack on six Africans in Maserata earlier this month uh, by Luca Traini, who was uh, at one point previously a candidate for the Northern League party. Now, this has fueled national debate about racism, about image, uh, but something that's really stood out is the fact that none of the leaders of the main parties attended this solidarity march that happened a couple of days after the attack. Uh, perhaps come to you first. Why, why didn't the no, Prime no, Minister that, go? Why no, didn't any leaders go? No, no. We, we, we organised a very important demonstration a few days after exactly to express uh, our solidarity and also our... Uh, disappointment for the way in which a number of, uh, of parties and forces are fueling extremism, populism, and xenophobia in this mm. campaign. This is really outrageous, was in particular illegal and or is saying. Basically, they say that uh, the fact that uh, a guy shooted against people, and mm. he shooted against uh, the seat of our party, yeah? we were part of the victims, mm. shooted against, against immigrants and against our party, claiming that we are responsible for uh, immigration and so on. And, 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 uh, and the leader of Lega North said, it was the responsibility that the, fa the fact that the guy shoot was the responsibility of the policy of the government. So the immigration, that the kind of the justification. Imagine that. So it's, mm. it's really a scandal. So uh, we have been uh, alone. Unfortunately, we would have liked to have a more solidarity from our party, a mm. more determination of all political forces in condemning it. Mm. Then there has been a small discussion, but was really not serious about the fact that in order not to fool, to to create another element of tension in that very small city, we decided to have the demonstration in another mm -hmm. city. So that was a simply, simply and that. And then others said they wanted, in any case, to do in the city, but it was really a, a minor point. So mm. I, I'm afraid you are not correct in the, in the sense that we were the only party uh, very strongly protesting against this, this, this uh, environment, uh, with toxic environment uh, against uh, immigration uh, and uh, full of xenophobia. And we hope all the other party will will join in strongly condemning any act well, of racism. Well, if you speak about the, the Five Star Movement, uh, Luigi Di Maio, uh, he condemned the killings. But he said that he didn't want to exploit them politically. That's exactly. Is that a bit of a cop-out, though? I mean, this is uh, citizens being shot on the streets. There's no political exploitation in condemning that illegal act. But of, of course, we always condemn any kind, any act of violence coming from every side. The problem of an act of violence, a terrible act of violence that happened in Mascherata during this ca electoral campaign becomes, during an electoral campaign, something that uh, is e politically exploited on both sides because uh, there, is, there are the uh, extremists of uh, right on one side, the extremists of left on the other, of left of the left on the <laughs> other side that uh, come speaking on one fact or one really bad fact of violence uh, becomes the become the the object of an electoral campaign we don't think that this is the right way to give a solution to our population so of course we condemn the violence but if we want to fight the racism if we want if you want to fight to fight the fascism we have to do it with a stricter rule in our country not saying uh, not saying ideological things and 
and uh, demonstrating when we are uh, mm -hmm. we are those who have to make the rules to be respected mm -hmm. by the whole population. I think that those do, those who exploited terrible facts like this uh, are not doing something good for our people. Well, th there are a lot of people in Italy who do want to. Uh, they they applauded when uh, Berlusconi for example, said that he wanted to send 600,000 illegal immigrants back. Uh, migration obviously has hugely impacted Italy in the last few years. Uh, do you see the, the roots of that being in the migration crisis of the last few years? Of course, uh, Italy uh, has been left a bit alone with the burden or being in the south of Europe, uh, so being one of the country more affected by refugee crisis, uh, the crisis in Libya, uh, the fact that the war uh, destroyed the, the state there, but not, and, and, and democratic state mm -hmm. has not been created yet. So there is a, a, a geopolitical context to which Italy has been more exposed. Mm. And, and the, you know, the D Dublin system that we are trying to reform uh, gives an additional burden of the country where, where uh, refugees arrive. So uh, this is a problem, uh, but there is also a problem of the rhetoric, uh, which is unacceptable. And, uh, and uh, here, really, I hope that all the, the political movement would, would... Because there are two different things. One thing is say, of course, we don't have to exploit uh, an act of, of crime. Mm. One other thing is say, yes, but we need strict rules and, and seem to put on the same ground those who, su who support the violence, fool the violence, and those who are protesting against. So they are not the same thing. So I think uh, I would really uh, hope that also Five Star Movement, uh, which is not using the same rhetoric that Lega, I want to be clear that, but would make a more clear choice of which camp they want to say. You cannot, when, when, this, when you have this kind of crisis and this, uh, just be in the middle. No, you have to make a clear mm. uh, cho choice of which camp you stand. And I think all the democratic forces and, and to stand against racism, against those mm. who are fueling this xenophobia climate in Italy. All right, well, uh, let's move on. Unfortunately, we're running out of time a little bit, but there's uh, another country, a third country, that's come into the discussions about Italy recently, uh, talking about Russia. Now, the first aspect of this we'll look at is to do with fake news. Uh, here's Frédéric Simon to explain a bit more. Since the start of the election campaign in Italy, fake videos and pictures have circulated on social networks. In fact, the issue of fake news has itself become an election campaign theme. The leader of the Social Democrats, Matteo Renzi, has promised to propose a law to fight disinformation if he is elected. He also called on Facebook to fight against the phenomenon in the run-up to the election. Among the most widely shared fake news is this picture of an Italian Secretary of State attending a ceremony which was wrongly presented as the funeral of a Mafia boss. There is also this video with fake subtitles where the Russian President Vladimir Putin is allegedly shown blaming the Italian government for the defeat of the national football team in the World Cup qualifiers. Equally fake is this article, which claims that senior Italian MPs are supporting so-called Nazi parties in the Ukrainian parliament. The term Nazi being regularly used by pro-Russians to designate those who oppose the partition of the country as part of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Matteo Renzi, the former head of government, goes as far as accusing Russia of being behind at least some of these disinformation campaigns. Those fears are echoed in a U.S. Senate report published in January. In the run-up to the elections in Italy, the U.S. senators have accused the Kremlin of sending cash to a far-right party, the Northern League, as well as to the five-star movement of Pepe Grillo. Two parties which are broadly in favor of lifting the European sanctions adopted in response to the annexation of Crimea by Russia. OK, so there we go. We just heard there American senators uh, in a report accusing the Kremlin of sending money to the Northern League and Five Star Movement. Uh, Ignacio Carrell from the Five Star Movement. Is this I, true? I can only, I can only laugh on uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, things because uh, we, we never, get, we never get, get any money from... We refuse the Italian public money. Think if we, we were going to accept money coming from another country. The only link there is between Five Star Movement and Russia is that we've been... Uh, we've been 
against the sanctions of Russia. But this why, is an economical why thing. Why is that? Because, because there is the whole a, of the European Union is supposed to be united no, in these only, sanctions. The only the whole European Union is making a mistake because Russia should be a very good partner. And this is something that geopolitically is convenient for the United States to have sanctions of Russia. And when we talk about sanctions and effects, we have something that is negative for Italian economy. So that's why we are against mm -hmm. the sanction on Russia. And that's why we are for a more cooperative environment. Okay, so and you say it's unfounded about the Russian money. It's absolutely money. unfounded. And we said many times, so there are, this is a fake news. This is a very good... A, an, a, a fake news within this is a fake news. fake news within a fake news. And uh, to answer Mr. Gualtieri on the migration, on yeah, the migration issues, we, uh, we, we want to clarify that in Italy there has, been a, when there, is a, there has been a double exploitation. One has been political, the one mm. that is making Lake Nord, for example, mm -hmm. and the other one, it's economical, because for a long long time, but all, all parties that have been ruling in Italy have considered the fact that Italy was on the border and so mm -hmm. the, the country that should, uh, that should accept more immigrants as something convenient because there were all those that we uh, that we've been called the business of migration. Mm -hmm. After some years with all these numbers coming to our country, this is, this is becoming something unacceptable for public opinion. But the Five Star Movement is always, uh, is always facing the uh, human human factor of migration with concrete facts and solutions. So we are not taking an ideological position, but we are always facing the, the, uh, human, the human factor in a uh, concrete way. All right, well, unfortunately, that is all we have time for. There are so many topics that we could have talked about in this election, but thank you both very much for your time. Ignacio Corral from the Five Star Movement and Roberto Gualtieri from the Democratic Party. Uh, as we said, uh, we'll be following the Italian election for you on France 24. For now, though, that's it from us. We'll see you shortly for more European news.